Eurydice in a used car lot. Margaret Travis paused in the empty foyer of the cinema, looking at the photographs in the display frames. In the dim light beyond the curtains, she saw the dark-suited figure of Captain Webster, the muffled velvet veiling his handsome eyes. The last few weeks had been a nightmare. Webster with his long-range camera and obscene questions. He seemed to take a certain sardonic pleasure in compiling this one-man Kinzer report on her. Positions, planes, where and when Travis placed his hands on her body. Why didn't he ask Catherine Austin? As for wanting to magnify the photographs and paste them up on enormous billboards, ostensibly to save her from Travis. She glanced at the stills and the display frames of this elegant and poetic film in which Cocteau had brought together all the myths of his own journey of return. On an impulse to annoy Webster, she stepped through the side exit and walked past a small yard of cars with numbered windshields. Perhaps she would make her descent here. Eurydice in a used car lot? The Concentration City In the night air, they pass the shells of concrete towers, blockhouses half buried in rubble, giant conduits filled with tires, overhead causeways crossing broken roads. Travis followed the bomber pilot and the young woman along the faded gravel. They walked across the foundation of a guardhouse into the weapons range. The concrete aisles stretched into the darkness across the airfield. In the suburbs of hell, Travis walked in the flaring light of the petrochemical plants. The ruins of abandoned cinemas stood at the street corners, faded billboards facing them across the empty streets. In a waste lot of wrecked cars, he found the burnt body of the white Pontiac. He wandered through the deserted suburbs. The crash bombers lay under the trees, grass growing through their wings. The bomber pilot helped the young woman into one of the cockpits. Travis began to mark out a circle on the concrete target there. How Garbo died, or how Garbo died.